What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video from r slash malicious compliance. Now, if you're here to find out how to become a baron of the sovereign principality in Europe, you may just want to keep watching. Why on earth would I think that would make people want to watch my video? The threat of malicious compliance was enough. A few years ago, I rented a furnished apartment. The place was dirty, but everything was in good order and I desperately needed something affordable in that part of town, so I took it right away. The landlord was a bit of a tool, but I figured he'd be harmless. I spent the first week deep cleaning the place, taking pictures of everything. The dust, inches deep, that had accumulated behind furniture, the grime built up on the counters, condom wrappers from several residents prior, thankfully, no used ones. I carefully documented everything, mentioned nothing to the landlord, and paid my rent on time for the duration of my contract. A year later, when I moved out, I cleaned the place myself, during which time my landlord stopped by for an errand. He later sent me the following paraphrased email. Dear OP, when I stopped by today, I was disappointed to see the state of the apartment. You claim to be in the middle of cleaning, however, if that is what you call cleaning, then you can expect me to keep your safety deposit, as I will need to hire a professional cleaning service. I expect you to leave the apartment tomorrow in the same state in which you received it. So, I responded in kind. Dear Landlord, please find attached time-stamped photos of the state in which the apartment was when I received the keys. If you insist upon it being in the same state, then I am happy to oblige. In that case, we should delay my move-out appointment until later in the day, as I will need several hours to cart up some extra dirt to throw on the floors and counters, as well as make my way through a pack of condoms. He couldn't have answered quickly enough to tell me that everything would be fine. I got my whole deposit back, too, and an apology. As someone who recently began a new life in the world of apartment residence, landlords can be just about the biggest pieces of sh**. That's uh, that's about it. Just massive assholes, gaping. Some might say, "Ew, ugh. God, why would I say? Why did I say that?" Anyhow, uh, good for OP for pushing back against a landlord trying to scam him out of his security deposit. I haven't seen such a great comeback since Wallace and Davis saved the Haynes sisters from the sheriff, who tried to pull the old rug routine in the 1954 Irving Berlin classic, White Christmas, because, well, let's just say they were doing it for a pal in the army. It's not good, but it's a reason. Business launched to spite real estate. I lived in a really horrible place that had an equally horrid property management team. I say team because they changed PMs whenever there was a problem. Nothing was ever done and in the end there is a massive report against them with relevant authorities for their misconduct. But to the malicious compliance in question. Property manager told me I had to have the carpets professionally cleaned, which wasn't in the contract, or else I'd lose my $800 bond when I moved out. After some back and forth, explaining I had used a professional carpet cleaning machine and was well experienced in doing vacay cleans, she insisted it must be an accredited carpet cleaner and that she would await for an official receipt that had their ABN on it before approving the return for bond. I did some research and found out I could become an accredited carpet cleaner as there are no official licensing boards in my state. So I did what any sane person would do. I paid the $85, did the online course, and got my certificate. Registered a business name, ABN, etc, etc, all free via a government program I was in at the time. I handed the property management a copy of my accreditation and an invoice for services. I became a professional carpet cleaner and have since properly launched a vacay cleaning business that's still going six months later. Now as soon as I read that it's easy to become an accredited carpet cleaner, I had to look into it. As someone who is, not to brag, currently an ordained minister in the Universal Church of Life, a landowning baron in Sealand, a sovereign principality off the eastern shore of Britain, a licensed bartender in my state, a nutritionist, and not to mention Time's 2006 Person of the Year, well, I love stupid certifications and licenses. Accredited carpet cleaner would look great next to an econ degree on my resume. Unfortunately, upon further inspection of the IICRC, or Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration Certification for all you normies, the one to five day class I would need to attend is not going to be offered anywhere near me over the next year. And before you guys comment, yes, I checked both carpet cleaning technician and rug cleaning technician, which I just found out are separate things. Needless to say, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day has been ruined. On to the next story. You want me to follow policy? 
Okay, I'll glitch your phone out of existence with my shampoo obsession. Sh sham shampoo f phone wh what? What is this? I don't think my brain can process this at all. Let's just find a different story to extrapolate upon in unnecessary ways. <laughs> Prove I broke my arm? Sure. Now that is a title I can get behind. Yes, I'm a little concerned, but we'll keep reading. A bit of a warning for the queasy. Descriptions get a little graphic. The background's kind of long, but it's important to the story to understand how ridiculous this nurse was being, and how clumsy I am. Now, I can reaffirm both those points as I, being the narrator, have read the rest of the story, but I'll let you guys see. Background. Way back in the magical year of 2000, I was a teenager attending a summer camp. Usually, it was day only. Tons of outdoor activities, canoeing, hiking, swimming, archery, the works. I did not break my arm doing any of these activities. For the older two years of kids, they would host an overnight intense once a month. I was 13 and finally allowed to go and very excited. I got my tent, sleeping bag, and friends. The night went as you would expect when there's 20 13 year olds in tents with the adults nearby. We tried to pull as many stupid stunts as we could get away with. I got dared to stand on a picnic table and dance, yep 13 year olds are not very creative. So I got up there and did, in the dark, while it was raining. But I did not break my arm dancing on a wet table in near darkness. When we'd all had a good laugh, I went to step down using the bench and missed. My leg plunged down in the gap between the bench and the table. I went down and forward, hit the bench on my way, pivoted around really fast, and landed on my outstretched hands. There was an audible snap. My left forearm bearing my full weight and sudden deceleration snapped in half. Didn't even break the skin. I remember rolling over, seeing my arm with suddenly two elbows, panicking and pushing it back into place. Not perfectly, obviously, it was broken, but it was no longer at a 90 degree angle. That's when it started hurting. A lot. The ambulance took forever to get us as they kept missing the turn off for the campsite. I found out later they drove past it for most of the time. Eventually, it arrives, I'm loaded in, and it's off to the hospital. When we finally arrive, it's been about an hour since I broke my arm. I've been in intense pain the whole time, and the EMTs hadn't given me anything for it. I don't really remember why. The whole ride is very fuzzy. But here's where the malicious compliance comes in. I get brought into the main desk triage area. This hag of a woman with permanent resting bitch face starts asking me questions while the EMTs are standing by with me after telling her what they knew. It's a bit fuzzy, but the gist was this. So, uh, what happened? Well, I fell and broke my arm. It really hurts. The EMTs said you could give me something while I wait? The nurse rolls her eyes and makes a tut-tut noise. We have to get your arm x-rayed first to make sure it's really broken. We can't give you anything until we're sure. Now, go take a seat. Yeah, but I'm sure. It broke in half. <laughs> nurse smirking. Really? You broke it in half? Prove it. I swear to god, I get kids like you all the time looking for drugs. Now, I am beyond pissed. I've been in agony for over an hour and this woman is treating me like absolute garbage. Even if it were just a sprain, shouldn't that warrant some kind of pain management like an aspirin, a Tylenol, something? Look, I'm holding my arm, I think for a second, and decide... Ah, f*** it. As the EMTs are about to interject, I raise my left arm, grab the far end of my forearm with my right hand, and push. It bends. Very, very far. Her face drains of all color and she looks like she's going to be sick. She immediately gets on the phone. I'm now in 10 times the amount of pain, but I'm grinning as only a sh disturbing teen can. It took them less than 5 minutes to put me in a room, pump me full of morphine, set my arm in a temporary wrap. Then they x-ray me and schedule the surgery. I had a plate and five screws put in along with a full cast that I had to keep on for about six weeks. They took the plate and pins out six months later. It was very painful and annoying, but other than the gnarly scar on my arm, totally fine. Thinking back on it 20 years later, still worth it. I used to revere doctors and nurses as infallible. Now, before I go on, I must acknowledge how grateful I am for those in the medical profession who dedicate their lives to other people's well-being, but that doesn't mean some of them aren't absolute dumbasses, or at least can at times do things that are conducive to dumbassery. 
Five nurses once told me I needed oral surgery to reattach a tooth before a dental surgeon informed me immediately that it was just a baby tooth. Now, I know that's kind of a reverse situation from the story presented, but the point still stands, they make mistakes, even if they're professionals. Now that I'm actually a college student and know a number of fellow nursing students that now work with real patients in real hospitals en route to becoming real nurses, holy sh**, am I scared for the future of the practice. God bless anyone who comes into their care, and I'm sorry, but Kyle, if you're listening, please don't kill me. Sure, I'll charge you more. Now this story isn't as exciting as most of the other ones I see on the subreddit, but hopefully it helps pass some time during your commute or bathroom break. Now. I won't say that this warning is for no reason, it isn't the highest stakes story in the world, at most it's a $9 kind of story, but honestly it has just as much of a home in r slash asshole tax as it does in malicious compliance, so keep that in mind. You'll see. I work at an international furniture retail store that also has a cafeteria style restaurant. Oh, I wonder, I wonder what that could be. I hope they serve meatballs. Some days I work as a cashier and ring up furniture, and other days I'm a cashier at the restaurant. The restaurant sells entrees anywhere between $3 and $9. This story happened today while I was working in the restaurant. The restaurant is having a special for the Veterans Day weekend where customers can get an entree, super salad, and drink for free with a valid military ID. A military family came in today and grabbed two entrees. One was the $3 one and the other was $9. A salad, a drink, and a couple other things. When I rung up everything and applied the discount, the computer automatically made the $3 entree free instead of the $9 one as again the lesser of the two values. I told the family I would take the $3 entree off the order and charge them for that separately so that the more expensive entree could be free. Everything for the first order ended up being about $4 with the other little things they purchased, plus the $3 in a separate order their total bill would have been $7. Keep that in the back of your head. The husband was super confused when I explained this to him, and no matter how many times I tried to clear things up, he kept angrily telling me to put everything together so he wouldn't have to pay two separate times. His wife understood me and tried to explain it to her husband also, but it seemed like that only made him angrier and he just wouldn't budge. After a couple minutes of going back and forth, he started shouting to just do what I'm being paid to do and obey the customer. Well. Obeying the customer is not actually what this employee is being paid to do, but you go off. Now, I'm a pretty non-confrontational person, and him shouting at me just made me super embarrassed. Finally, I gave up and stopped caring about trying to save them some money. I put the cheaper entree back on the price and told them the new total, which had jumped from $4 to about $14. Again, compare that to the $7 total before. The husband then looked even more confused than before and asked me what the hell had happened and I just said, look, I did what you asked me to do and put everything on the same order. His wife starts laughing and before the husband started yelling again, she told him to just shut up and pay. And that's the story, folks. Currently on my break, so wish me luck as I go back out there and deal with everyone. Well, OP, I certainly wish you all the best. This story really opens up a whole new can of worms on public altercations where one spouse isn't necessarily in league with the other, isn't quite in cahoots, not always making the same bets, and weird made up euphemisms aside, it's a common trope in a lot of these reddit stories, from entitled parents to revenge to malicious compliance, and it's one I've certainly come across many a time in my own life. On one flight, for example, a woman had to be removed because she wouldn't leave the bathroom before takeoff. Despite her husband's best attempts at peacekeeping and pacifism, police had to escort them off. As the plane arrived back at our original gate of departure so the couple could be escorted off the aircraft, one woman yelled from the middle of the cabin, Leave the husband! Take the wife! It did get a cackle, but obviously they left together after some urging by local law enforcement. The sentiment remains nonetheless.